everybody to the Single on Stiletto Show. I'm Suzanne Oshima, and I'm a matchmaker and dating coach at Dream Bachelor and Bachelorette, and I'm also the founder of Single on Stilettos. Today we have in our show Lori Bazoko, and she is the executive editor and founder of CupidsPulse.com. And I'm so excited to have her here today because today we're talking about how to balance your career and your love life. Before we get started, though, I would love, Lori, for you to tell us a little bit about you and how you started CupidsPulse.com. Sure. Thank you so much, Suzanne, for having me on your show today. Um, Yes, I am the executive editor of CupidsFalls.com, as Suzanne had mentioned. Um, I actually started the site because I had been working as a publicist uh, for several years, and I was uh, well into approaching 40 and still single. And I decided to really just like reinvent myself or revamp my entire dating uh, lifestyle and how I dated. And lo and behold, I met my husband on an online dating site. He proposed in nine weeks. I actually said yes to that. Um, And I really just felt uh, when this happened for me that I wanted to take my experience and my knowledge of celebrities and build a site that catered to not only what people are reading about every day, but how celebrities' relationships impact us, impact the everyday person. So that's what so that's what Cupid's Pulse does. It focuses on celebrity uh, relationships and entertainment. Awesome. So I just want to add one thing that Lori left out that I think is really important for our audience to know, and that is that she found and met her husband in her late 30s. She started her business in your 40s, am I right? Yes, correct. In her, your early 40s. And then she also has, what she forgot to mention, is two beautiful daughters. And so Lori managed to do this all later in life. So ladies, you really, really can have it all. But it takes work, right, Lori? Absolutely. I mean, yes, the topic of our conversation is how to balance career and love and life. And interestingly, I left out my two daughters, three and five years old. No, absolutely. Um, it's, it's, It's something that's a topic of conversation. I mean, even in the press today, right, with Sheryl Sandberg's book, Lean In, and this conversation keeps happening uh, with women. Like, can we really have it all? I mean, my belief in that is that we can have it all, but we may not be able to have it just all at the same time. And I think that's something to be just cognizant of. Exactly. So let's jump into your three best tips on how women can balance their career and finding love. And I know your first tip is about prioritization. So tell us a little bit about that and how women can do that. Absolutely. I mean, we all know that prioritizing our, you know, checklist for the day, for the week, for the month, having short term and long term goals is very important. Um, But when you're trying to manage all of this at once, you know, really setting uh, priorities for yourself. And, And what I mean by that is what may be, you know, important to one person, one woman in their career may not be what you're looking for. At the end of the day, it all comes down to Can you lay lay your head on the pillow and say you've done your best? I mean, are you happy with what you've accomplished? Do you feel like your career is, you know, makes, you know, at the end of the day, is that made you happy? The quality time you're spending with your children. I mean, it's it's really important. And, And I think just to add one more thing to that, it's very important to communicate, you know, at work to your coworkers, to your boss, you know, as well as your significant other, what is important to you? You know, leaving work early to celebrate your husband's birthday doesn't mean you don't value your job. And similarly, working late doesn't mean you don't want to spend time with your family. Right, exactly. Now, those are great tips for a woman that's married or has a boyfriend. But what about as far as prioritizing your life when you're single and finding love? It's a great, great question. Um, And I think it happens, Now, I think, I know it can happen in both regards, whether you're single or you are in a relationship. Um, Here's um, actually some advice that that a wise uh, woman, um, who many of you may know, um, she's on Shark Tank, hint, hint, she actually gave me some amazing advice two and a half years ago that I really hold dear to me and I wanna share with you. Um, Barbara Corcoran, she said to me one day when I asked her how she's able to do it all, she said, you know, I don't know that I have the magic, you know, sauce or secret yet, 
But what I try to do is instead of breaking my time into hours of the day, you know, from 10 to 4, I'll work. From 4 to 5, I'll, you know, be with my children. From 5 to 6, I'll cook dinner. I try to break it into days of the week. So Monday, my errand day. Friday, my kid's day. Totally devoted to my children. Uh, Tuesday, maybe that's the day that I take all of my meetings. So all meetings all that day. And, and, and whatever it works for you, but prioritizing into days really allows you to wake up in the morning with a clean slate and feel like you know exactly what you're going to do through the day. And when you accomplish it, it feels so much better. Awesome. Okay. So your second tip is about time management, which you kind of touched on lightly there. So can you give us some more tips on how to focus on time management? I mean, time management is important when you're striving for balance, right? Mm -hmm. um, think about it like this. If you often divide up your work into the tasks that you must get done, like I just mentioned, three hours spent on research, two hours spent on emails, etc. cetera, um, you know, you should also do the same with your personal life. You know, thinking whether you're single or coupled, you're thinking about, okay, three hours I'm going to devote to, you know, maybe going out there and meeting somebody new. Uh, you know, four hours I'm going to devote to, you know, beauty and healthcare and, and, and being at the gym. I mean, it, it, we do this with work so simply, so easily. We don't do this enough with our personal life. That is so true. And, you know, what would you say to the woman? Because I hear this all the time, especially in New York, and I'm sure there's women outside of New York that do this too, but I don't know what it is about New York because I've lived in other places, and I, I hear women in New York say this all the time. Well, I work 12 to 14-hour days, so I don't know when I'm going to find time to go out there and meet men. So what would you say to those women? I would say set boundaries. I mean why are you working 12 to 14 hour days? I mean, look, I'm, I'm not one to say I did it too. I did it when I was single, but really, is that healthy? I mean, and then the expectations, like, this is a whole nother category I can get into, the expectations from your employer of the workload you can accomplish and achieve becomes, you know, higher. So now people think you can do more. No, seriously, set some boundaries for yourself. Go home, you know, at least three days a week at a reasonable hour, five, six o'clock, regardless if everybody else is still in the office. Sometimes when you start setting that pattern of leaving when others don't, you're really helping them as well. Right. No, that's, that's very true. And I have to add something because I've actually seen this a lot too, is that some women, not all women, but some women will actually work long hours because they don't want to get out there and do the work to actually try and meet a man, whether it's doing online dating or going out and doing new activities that will help them meet the right man, is they'll avoid it by saying, I have to work when they really don't. Like, is anything that urgent? I mean, obviously there's going to be days when you have projects, but like you said, Set boundaries because not every day do you have to be there till 10 o'clock at night, right? Absolutely. You know, when you're in a relationship too, and I often see these, you know, this happen as well. If you promise your significant other that you'll be home by six mm -hmm. to help with dinner, to go to dinner, whatever, make sure you leave the office in time. Don't let them down. Yeah. Yeah. That's very, very true. And if you're single, I think a good point is make a promise to yourself make a commitment to yourself that you're going to go whatever it is do an activity to go and meet men or go meet girlfriends so make that commitment to your girlfriends right so don't let them down either right absolutely so your third tip is about taking interest in your partner's career right if you are in a relationship it's very important to talk to your partner and I think a lot of people do do this but ask them questions about their daily you know projects or their co-workers you know share stories about your own job as well I mean not only will this ensure that you feel connected to your partner but it'll also help you unwind after a stressful work day you know just 
be sure to set, you know, a limit on, you know, the job chit chat because you don't want to have your own relationship consumed with your job because then you're really taking your work home, right? Um, another, another, um, I think, really helpful thing to do is to split up the household chores. I mean, if you both work full time, it's not fair for one person to be expected to keep up, you know, on all the laundry and the cooking, etc. Clean the house and walk the dog and all of this. I think if you split up the activities, I mean, I do that very well with my husband. We split things up even taking you know even getting the kids ready in the morning and it really does help balance life I mean I'm not saying it works for everybody but it really will help you relieve a lot of the responsibilities if there's you know if you're in a relationship and two people are really helping out exactly and ladies if you're single I think the really important thing is is that you know you need to when you go out on dates, don't talk about your career all the time, but Lori's absolutely right. As you get involved in a relationship, you want to show interest in your partner's um, career. But when you first start dating, limit, like Lori said, the, the career talk, because that can be also a turnoff too, is if you talk about your career way too much, um, just limit it. But you want to show interest, and I think that those are some really, really great points. So, Lori, I love all these tips. So, ladies, you can balance your career and your love life. It really is possible. Lori is living proof that she did it when she was single, and now she's doing it when she's married. So, Lori, I would love for you to tell our audience how they can find you. Absolutely. I would love if you could visit us at www.cupidspulse.com and there you'll find more tips, techniques, dating, relationship advice to really help you live a healthy, happy uh, relationship. Awesome. And I've been on her site and I'm actually um, an advice columnist on her site and I love her site. So ladies, go Thanks. visit her at cupidspulse.com. So thanks, Lori, for joining Thank us. Thank you, Suzanne. Thank you for your time.